Holoim la, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, Bahashim Rekha HaKodash. Double honor to our apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule well and that by the Spirit taught us this beautiful truth. Just wanted to, you know, say the water to all you Akim and Akwafes, sincerely keeping the laws, the statutes, and commandments of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai to the best of your ability. This is Yachanan Awaf just coming at you with another quick lesson praying that it's edifying by the Spirit. And, um, you know, just by the Spirit, you know, I, I don't know, just typed in, is Jesus white, right? <laughs> we already know that the stuff that they're going to show overall, you know, this is your typical, um, you know, picture that you would normally see of, of white Jesus. Or, you know, they got a few of them, it says real gorgeous, you know what I'm saying, but... Um, see, as you scroll through here, generally, this is what you're going to see, right? Now, this is just me and the images. So you're going to typically, typically get this guy right here. You know, you can clearly, you know, you see, you know, that the, everybody's damn living room. You know, about 98% of people on the planet damn near got one of these in their <laughs> living room. Where I should say so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, and... Nothing can be further from the truth, man. The Lord does not look like this. Our Lord, and his name is not Jesus. But I just put it in just to just show, you know, like if you put in, you know, um, Jesus or whatever, you know what I'm saying? This is what you're going to get. Now, the Lord's name is Yahawashai, which means that he's the savior or deliverer in Paleo-Hebrew. There's no letter J in Hebrew. The letter J was invented in 1524. Which I can get that as well. You know, I know a lot of people know that as far as that's into this truth. You know, if you've been into this truth for a while, you know that. But there are newcomers that are, you know, checking out the channel and um, checking out these videos. And they may not know. So we like to pull up stuff like that as evidence. You know what I'm saying? To show that, you know, um, to prove the case. You know what I'm saying? Because the scriptures talks about proving all things. And, you know, we use scriptures. We use, you know, um, information, um, you know, history. Sometimes it's secular history, but, you know, it makes a difference as well, because if it's secular history and it's true, then it can be used, you know, so to speak. OK, so like I said, this is your typical picture of who they call ignorantly called Jesus. And his name again is Yahushai. Now, I thought this was a dope picture because pretty much overall, this is what they're doing. As you can see, they got the brush whitewashing him. You know what I'm saying? And the scripture talks about um. You know, in the Apocrypha, how they would whitewash the uh, the pictures and change the pictures into looking like the so-called white man. See, the so-called white man done this. This is his doing. This is his work. You know, he wants the world to believe that. See, here's another one. When he got the brush. I don't know if they acting as if they putting some damn makeup on him or if they, you know. And this is another one of those effeminate looking pictures. You know, got him looking like a bearded lady. Just got him looking like a woman. But our Lord doesn't look like this, man. You know what I'm saying? So, but let me let me go off into Salakia. So I was here. Now, I went into the Wikipedia. Now, you think that the Wikipedia would give you all the information that you need to know, right? Because Wikipedia, you know, they ask for donations and everything. People donate a lot of money towards on Wikipedia and them getting certain things, you know, um, within their catalog or certain things right is is somewhat of a you know somewhat of a, a a pretty good source to get information from but now let's go off into it the wikipedia right race and appearance of jesus it says the race and um and appearance of jesus which we know again is yahweh shai widely accepted by researchers to be judean from galilee has been a topic of discussion since the days of early christianity now, they'll tell you that, but why do you have all these pictures of white Jesus? Why do you have all these different depictions of white Jesus? Why isn't there a, a, a so-called black Jesus? Well, why isn't there a so-called Chinese or Japanese or Cambodian or North Korean or South Korean? Or, you know, why isn't there a Jesus that looked like these people? Why is it the so-called white man? His picture is plastered all over the Internet when it comes to um, who the Lord looks like, right? Because it's all set up and orchestrated by them. Um, it says various theories about the race of um, Jesus have been proposed and debated. By the Middle Ages, a number of documents generally of unknown or questionable origin had been composed and were circulating with detail. Details of the appearance of Jesus. 
these documents are now mostly considered forgeries. This right here should be the main forgery right here, your white Jesus. Now, they do have one right here. And this one right here, off in this corner right here, that is an older one. Um, I think from the um the Russian icons right here, right here. You know what I'm saying? Where you got the little little uh the little so called black man with the fro. That's an older picture right there. That is one of those ones that's is older than any of these other ones, really, in reality. You know that I think that's one of the Russian icons right there. As a matter of fact, we can probably put that in as well. But we know for a fact that the scriptures describe the Lord as being a dark melanated man, right? Okay, so now let's read a little bit more because I want to get to this chart that they have as far as they're saying olive color. Because you always hear that too. He's olive. He's Middle Eastern. He's olive. And I want to go off into that Middle Eastern shit too, man. All of it is a made up um, um, hookup, man. Social constructs by the so-called white man because he doesn't really want you to know that he's Esau Edom. And that he has absolutely nothing to do with the scriptures other than being the wicked that the Bible speaks of. Okay, it says a wide range of depictions have appeared over the two millennia since Jesus' death, often influenced by cultural settings, political circumstances, or theological context. Many depictions are interpretations of spurious sources and are generally historically incorrect. By the 19th century, theories that Jesus was non-Semitic was being developed. Well, he wouldn't be Semitic. He would be Shemitic. You know what I'm saying? So that's a complete lie. But yeah, of course he's not non-Semitic. He would be um, Shemitic. You know, he's not Semitic. It's Shem with an H. Or being developed. That's another thing that they say. Because you can clearly see in the scriptures. Matter of fact, let's let's do this. Let's try this real quick, right? Let's put in um, Sem and see what shows up. Right? Let's put in S-E-M the way that they spell it. And see if anything pops up. Okay, uh, it, it is in Luke um, 3.36. But of course, you know, that they, they don't believe in the New Testament. So, I don't know why they would have done that. But I'm not even... Let me see if this is... Uh... Okay, so yeah, yeah. This is a part of the uh, the genealogy. Yep, this was a part of um, the genealogy of, uh, of, of Mary, basically. Right, so they do have Sim in the new in New Testament, but let's go into it. Matter of fact, let's just go all the way into this, and we'll pull this word Sim or this name Sim. Let's go off into it in the Greek, right? Which it should take you back to the um the Hebrew. So it's Sim right here, G forty five ninety. Let's see, oh, Salakia. These things are very important to know. You know, it's, it's you know we have to search out things like this. You got to put a little, little bit of work in. See, they actually have it right here, Shem. That's what it would be. So now the so-called white man, the Israeli, he tells you that it's it's Sim S E M, but it's actually Shem S H E M. See, you can see it right there. I have it highlighted. So now let's go off into this right here. Because this is the Hebrew. There you go. That's the Hebrew word for it right there. Shem. It's not Sim. So why would they give you that? Why wouldn't they call him Shem? Why why, why wouldn't they say you're being anti-Shemitic? If you're talking. Because they understand that Shem had multiple sons. You see what I'm saying? Shem. You know it says um, the eldest son of Noah. The progenitor of the Semitic tribes. How many Semitic tribes were there? You see? Now, that's a question to be asked. Because everybody that came from Shem would be a Shemite. So, and it wouldn't just be them people that's over there. Now, they are from Shem. But they come from Abraham, Isaac, and Esau. See, Esau was Shemitic. You know what I'm saying? But but there's a number of nations that came out of Shem. Matter of fact, let's um see if we can get a little bit on that real quick. I can come back to this. <laughs> I hate to come out of here though. I'm trying to think uh to do another uh let's just put in how many children did Shem have? Or we'll put in sons because that's really the way that it went. 
You see, Eli went bomb um, goes by your by your dad. And Nate, those sons would have carried on the seed line. So let's just see. The information they got. Yeah, they're not putting it in. I just wanted to get straight to the point. Oh, let me see. Okay, what's well, Salakia? Let's go into the scriptures on it, right? But as you can see, clearly his name is Shem. Okay, so uh, let's see here. Here we go right here. Genesis um, 10 and 22. So let's go off into it. Let's see here. It says the children of Shem, Elam, Ashur, and Arphaxad, and Lud, and Aram. Okay, so all these were the, the descendants of Shem right here. So... Those and, and, and that seed line carries on from a fox ad. That's where um, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob comes from. So it, it carries on from there. You know what I'm saying? So from that seed line right there, you know, even the so-called white man, he comes from that seed line, but he comes from, but his seed line is Abraham, Isaac, and Esau. Then you had Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, which are the twins. And, and it, that's who this whole thing, as far as this movie that's being played out on the earth, that movie is being played out by those two brothers. You have a good guy and you have a bad guy. It's like a, a almost like a Marvel movie or um, X-Men or something like that. Let's just say, for example, and you have the good the good side and then you have the bad side. Esau, the so-called white man, happens to be the bad, um, um, the bad guy in the movie. And he's playing... You know, it, this is his role. He he he's he's the star right now. You know, he he's whooping everybody's asses in the movie, so to speak, up until the point where you know how a movie plays out, and then at the end of the movie, the good guy always comes up. That would be Jacob. So this is who this this whole thing of what's going on on the earth, everything that you see playing out on the earth right now from these wars, rumors of wars, um. Everything that's going on about with, with, with just uh, the wickedness that you see as far as just everything. It's got to do really with those two families. And then all the rest of the, the, the families are kind of like um, extras. They're kind of like players in it. You know what I'm saying? But clearly the point that I wanted to make though is that Shem had all these children right here. And all those children were um, Shemitic people as well. So it's not just this one people that's over there that's claiming to be um um semitic so when they say anti-semitic which they should be saying you know it would be anti-semitic basically to be talking about so-called black black people because they are semitic it would be anti-semitic you know what i'm saying to to talk about um you know um elam like the you know um the uh the so-called indian with the dot on their forehead so to speak those are those are shemites as well you see the so-called white man that's right here in America, those are those are Shemites as well. So any person that's saying anti-Shem and, and, and it's coming from a person that's a Shemite themselves, how could it be anti-Sem? You know, you get what I'm saying? So anyway, let's go back. I don't want to, you know, um be long-winded or confuse anybody. But um let's go back to uh because I wanted to get this chart, right? Let's go back into the is Jesus really white? Because check out this chart right here. Because they say olive color. I'm just going to shoot directly to that. Right? They have a um, link right here. Uh, let me see here. I think it was... Uh, is it the historical? Yeah, right here. Already went into it. Right? Historical appearance. It says, research of ancient skeletons in Palestine 
suggests that Judeans of the time were biologically closer to Iraqi Jews than to any other contemporary population, according to specialist bio um, historian Yossi Nagar. Thus, in terms of physical appearance, the average Judean of the time would have likely had brown or even black hair, olive skin, and brown eyes. So what does olive skin mean? See right here? So I'm going to go to the link. Now, you have this little chart right here as far as, like, you know, the colors. You see from white to dark brown. Okay, so it says olive skin is a human skin color spectrum. It is often associated with the pigmentation in type 3. So as you can see right here, this will be type 3 right here. The, the You know, the, the third one from the white one right here. Type 3, you can see the numbers right here if you can see them. This will be type 3 right here. You see it? And they have it in Roman numer numerals. So that would be type 3. It says from type 3 to type 4 and 5 range in the Fitzgerald scale. So here you go. So here, here's your colors right here of what they mean by olive color. Right? So where do you get the so-called white man at in there? Because the so-called white man would be right here. See? 1 and 2. It doesn't mention 1 and 2. It mentions 3, 4, and 5. It says between a scale of 3... Four and five. Of course, they're not gonna say six right here. The dark, dark chocolate, which we know, that's more than likely what he was. And then they have um right here. They says the UV, UV sensitive burn rather than tan, right? But they, by their own words, see they'll tell you some truth. You just gotta look into it, right? It says um let's get that back again. Olive skin is a is a human skin color spectrum. It is often associated with pigmentation in the type 3. We just showed you 3. Matter of fact, we can click into that. Um, 3, it says um, 3 to type 4 and type 5 ranges of the Fitzgerald scale. Let's see what his scale looks like. Let's see if this is something different. Same thing. Same thing pretty much overall. Let's see. Uh, okay, so he had pretty much a, uh, let me see. Now, these are the scores right here. It says, type 1 scores 0 through 6, always burn, never tans, pale as freckles. That's the so-called white man. See? So you know that for sure his ass went over there in the continent of Africa, which is where Israel is at, too. Africa, um, Israel is actually in that continent of Africa. They try and say Asia, but it's really not. So they have from zero to six, it always burns, right? Because this is what his scale is um, talking about. Um, it says Fitzgerald scale remains a recognized tool for derma, dermatological research into human skin pigmentation. So let me see. Uh, so that was type one, which is type one would be the so-called white man, right? They have type 2, scores 7 through 13. And that will be the secondary one that you see right here. See, type 2. They got type 1, always burns and if it's trying to tan. That's why you see them out in the sun and they be, you know, looking the way that they look. Now, type 2 right here, it says, usually burns, tans minimally, light colored but darker than fair. Okay? So now you have type 3, sometimes mild burn. Tans uniformly, golden, honey, or olive. Then you have type four. These are the ones that they were talking about as far as, you know, olive color or what the Lord would be looking like. Olive color. It says burns minimally, um, always tans, well, moderate brown. See? So now they also had type five, scores 28 through 34. Very rarely burns. Tans very easily, dark brown. So even in their own words, they, even in their own words, they're telling you that they say olive color because, I mean, when you think about olives, I've only seen green olives. Um, um, they have um, like a, a lighter brown olive and I've seen black olives. I've never seen no other color olive. Maybe they have many more olives. I'm not sure, but those are typically your colors. So we know that nobody's running around out here green. So that brown to that black olive. So it's really like they're telling on themselves, but they 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 don't want to give all the information up because it 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 shows that there's some fucking liars, bro.
straight up. Now, they actually have, I went off into, let me see, was it? Because they had the scripture. They actually had, matter of fact, let's just go into the scripture. We can go into it ourselves here. Revelation 13, um, chapter 1, so like you, um, verses 13. And this is important to know, man, because, you know, a they'll tell you that his color doesn't matter, but they've been pushing white Jesus forever. So it must do matter. They're not telling you the true true color of, of, of our Lord. So it, it's got to matter, right? Verse 14, I'm just going to start there. It says, his head and his hairs were white like wool. So he had woolly textured hair. As white as snow. So basically like a hoary look or gray. They would call it gray today or grays. Because I got uh, woolly um, so-called white hair in my beard. You know what I'm saying? It says, and his eyes were as a flame of fire. And his feet, here you go. His feet like unto fine brass as if they burned in a furnace. See? And, and, and fine brass... It's brown already. So if you burn fine brass in a, in a furnace, then it's going to just be a darker, darker brown, man, or a darker color. As if it burned in a furnace and his voice as the sound of many waters. So he had a deep voice. He was a dark, melanated man, woolly hair with a deep voice, right? And they be trying to talk like, oh, yeah, this is how he looked, his heavenly look. Okay, well, if this is his heavenly look, then he would still be considered to be a so-called um, um, melanated dark man or black man, so to speak, right? Now, in the NLT over here, they have polished bronze, where you can find brass, but we can Google it. You know, I haven't done this in a while, so I like to kind of go through this, but you can Google it, man. Let's Google fine brass. Let's see what they come up with. Let's see what colors they have. Or, as a matter of fact, we can put in burnt brass, since they, they actually said that as if it was burnt in a furnace. And I ain't even had to type it all in. They got, um, you know, I just put burnt. There you go. See? Not now. We don't want AI doing shit. Cause, you know, AI might give you the real um, colors of the Lord, though. But somebody has this right here. So this is um, this is perfect. This is perfect. Look at that right there. Burnt brass. And that's what burnt brass look like. And this is, um, you know, and somebody actually put the scriptures in here. You know, this is, this is from a Hebrew Israelite right here. Which is beautiful because it's a beautiful depiction. Beautiful depiction because it, the the skin color is is same as this burnt brass, but um, you know, we we get it we get it from their source too. We get it from them. Let's get it from the so called white man. You know, because you know a lot of Jake they don't believe in they don't believe anything unless the so called white man says it. But here you go. I mean, you have a you know burnt brass like like these cups right here. You know. And we come in different shades of brown. And, 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 you know, it depends on, you know, the artist. Whatever artist, you know what I'm saying? Like, say like these, these bullet shells right here. That's burnt brass right there. See? And if you notice, I notice like in the summertime, you know, like say like if you got on, you know, you'd be wearing t-shirts or something like that. It's like, you know, your arms will be like the top of these, these shells right here. And then the, the, the other the upper part would be like the bottom of the shells, you know what I'm saying? Because it's not exposed to the um the, the sun as much. But I mean you can clearly see this is the example. This is a perfect example right here. You see? Burnt brass. We can put in polished. Let's put in polished brass just to prove the point even further. I mean, you know, but you get the point. Esau been out here lying. And and the lie is coming to a complete halt, man. So you have um this is um polished brass, right? So brass can come in a number of colors, you know, it just depends on how long you keep it in the furnace, you know. And then, you know, once you bring it out, you furn it, you you um you uh you know, you 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 rub it down basically, you you smooth it out or whatever, you know what I'm saying? But you can you can have it whatever color you want, you know what I'm saying? But you can have it from a lighter brown. If you leave it in the fire a little bit longer, it's going to come out darker. If you leave it in there longer, longer, it's going to come out darker. Of course, as long as you leave it in there, the darker it's going to come out. You bring it out, you polish it, and then it has like, you know, whatever rustic color that you want it to have, so to speak, right? Okay, so now, since we got all that covered, let's go. Because I did want to put in, um, what continent is Israel in? Because they got slick with this too. 
And this right here, let me see. This is a good one because they're saying that it's in Asia, right? But when you look at this right here, look. Look at where Egypt is at. There's a complete opening up here in the top of Egypt, right? That goes right there. Where you can clearly see that Israel is a part of that continent. Now, this other part where you see these lines and these borders at, that's Asia. But see, they don't want you to know that really in reality because there's only seven continents. Every place is within one of those continents. But they got they got slick. They try to, you know, um, break everything down. Because see, the last thing they want um, to be associated with is, is something black or something of dark skinned people or people with melanate with melanation. You know what I'm saying? So to speak. So if you mention Africa, if, if anybody say that Israel is in Africa, you'd be like, well, OK, uh, would that would that mean that um, so-called black people would, you know what I'm saying? So they don't want to be associated with any of that. So when you go off into these maps, matter of fact, let me. um. Let's just get some images. Let's go off into it. And, and and you and you know that the British came up with the Middle East thing back in the 1800s. So there's no such thing as Middle East. You see what I'm saying? So now here you go. You got. See right here in the yellow. And see they tried to see they made the Suez Canal. They made that. If you look right here, see right here where it says Suez Canal. You see what I'm saying? They they made all that. And then they called it the Middle East and they trying to separate it from actually being in the continent of Africa. They would prefer to say that it's in Asia. But it's not. Cuz in matter of fact, you, you know, it's even when you go through here, it's a lot of people that, you know, um have their commentaries on it. And and, and they're basically telling you that um it's in Africa for real. But is you know, they, they don't want it to have anything to do with Africa. So basically they're claiming um of course they're claiming that it's Asia. See what I'm saying? So you know you know, Esau done got slick, he done got, you know, a little freaky with it. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, but we're not ignorant of Satan's devices, man. So, you know, I, I just wanted to touch on this for a hot sec and bring this out. Because some of these um They'll admit to it, and then they try and get slick and get away from it. See? It says, Israel stands at the crossroads of Europe, Asia, and Africa. Geographically, it belongs to Asia, the Asian continent, and is a part of the Middle East region. See that? The Middle East, that, that term is not that long, that old. The British came up with that term in the 1800s, I think around 1850 or something like that. So it, there was never no Middle East. Middle East is not in the Bible nowhere. You're not going to see that. Let me see here. Because I clicked into one that was pretty good. But anyway, you get the point, man. These people are some damn liars. And the lie is being, um, you know, unraveled, man. And people are starting to see. See, like, check it out. Let me see if this is a good one right here. They get to plan with the maps. Because, see, that's how you know they're in control. But see, like, let me see. See right here? See that connection right there up up here where Egypt is at right here? Where it says now. I don't know if this is going to zoom in. But they know clearly well that it's more, um, it would be uh, in the African continent and not Asia. They know that, man. Anyway, I don't know what happened with that. I don't think it's going to. Let me see the. Yeah, they didn't they didn't they didn't gave they didn't gave some whole different names off and everything, bro. And that's why the scripture talks about um never trust an enemy and also um Job nine to twenty four, it talks about the earth is given into the hand of the wicked. He covered the faces of the judges thereof, if not wearing who is he? Because who's able to draw out the maps? Who's able to tell you what's what and where's where and they have the ability to say, you're going to fucking believe it because we said it. We wrote it down. It's in our um, books. It's in your history books. It's in your um, textbooks in your schools. And that's what it is, God damn it. You better not say other than that. So they're the ones that's in control of the curriculum. They're in control of telling you what's what. 
They're in control of telling you this is the Middle East when Middle East never even existed. <laughs> They're in control of, you know, giving you white Jesus, knowing full well that the Lord is not some white guy. They know that his name is not Jesus. You know, so, you know, you we have to keep all those things in mind. As a matter of fact, let me get this one scripture and I'll end out here. This Esau is being made bare, man. You know, everything that he has ever told and talked about, every you know, the Hebrew Israelites and 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 respectively of great millstone have been dissecting all that shit, man. Second um, Second Thessalonians two and three, it says, Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. And he is the man of sin, the son of perdition. That entire race that comes from Esau, Edom, the so-called white race, man. Verse 4, it says, Who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he is God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Who done that? The so-called white man gave you white Jesus, gave you a white God, gave you white disciples, gave you, you know, everybody in the Bible whitewashed every goddamn thing. Everything that's got anything to do with anything good or pure is always them. You think that no other races exist. <laughs> you know, here you go. You got the one race of people that don't have no melanin on the planet. And the other 17 races do have melanin, but they're the ones that's, you know, on top of every damn thing, you know. It's just their time to um, rule. They conquered. They stole. They whitewashed all the histories. They named themselves after all the places that they conquered. And, and now it's starting to be unrivaled. You know, you know, the Lord is starting to bring all of those things to the forefront. And, you know, when you because Esau is in a courtroom right now, basically, he's in like a spiritual courtroom. All the evidence is coming out. This is exhibit this, you know. This is this. We have um, video footage of this. You know, check out this conversation. We can. He's on tape. He done this. He took the bribe. He done this. He done that. All the evidence is lined up against this guy. So we don't need him to take a plate plea deal. There's not going to be a plea deal for him. He's going to get exactly what was coming to his ass. Straight for it. You know, straight shot. No chaser, man. Straight up, man. So Esau, get ready for all the, the bullshit that you've been doing, man. You, you're going to have to pay for all those things. You know, it's starting to really unravel and we can't wait until um, that Israeli and Gaza thing really start to unravel, unravel, you know, and that World War Three really gets to pop it, man. We can't wait until y'all line up over there and in and, 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 and the valley of judgment from Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, man, and, and he really give you all that business. And it's coming soon, too, and it's moving pretty quickly. So, you know, hey, you know, just something that um, just by the spirit I wanted to go into and um. Cause I was just gonna go for uh, my afternoon walk, but uh, you know, spirit was just like, go ahead and get into this um this this lesson, you know. And then the apostle always say, strike while the iron is hot. So um, you know, I pray that the lesson was edifying. With that, for me, inshallah.